hi guys uh welcome back to my channel it's your favorite mystic the siren says welcome back to my commentary channel where i speak about movie tv and soon to come books and everything that i like dislike and the good the bad and the ugly and everything all throughout and in between those frames of media so this episode was good i know crazy right this episode was good um of course there's stuff that i hated and we're gonna talk about that okay the passion will come but i actually enjoyed this i'm starting to see the other writers influences people aren't like repeating the same sentence five different times in a conversation anymore it's it's boiling down to two like sometimes the conversation will actually just flow or they'll just like repeat the same phrase like twice but in between so like for example if andy is like i think we should leave then danny will give her reasons as to why they shouldn't leave and then sabrina will say something unrelated or slightly unrelated and then andy will say but i really want to leave so it's like it's it's a little bit more cohesive i'm not being i'm not saying that these new writers are going to do these people justice because none of these people ain't ish but i do appreciate that it's easier to get through these episodes because the conversations aren't as weird and stunted and staccato you know so yeah oh disclaimer <laughs> these people are not real they're not okay they're not real um also disclaimer if you are one of those people that was super mad at danny in the beginning of the episode because she just exposed everything and you know kind of forced andy to expose everything you can leave and danny is not my favorite character at all but this needed to happen oh also <laughs> penelope is seven months pregnant meaning the worst that could happen is that she give birth early now i'm not saying that she couldn't lose the baby but all y'all who are like, oh, she cares more about Karen's pregnancy than Penelope. Of course she does. Karen is one of her best friends and she don't know Penelope. She just know that she should probably let Penelope know that she's with a criminal. Please stop comparing Danny to a criminal. I don't like Danny, but I'm not going to be weird about it. And there were things done in this episode after that that I don't like. And I will talk about them too. So if you're not going to be a hypocrite and you're going to think logically, you can stay. But if you're going to be all, I will be deleting those comments because I ain't got time. If you want to hear my actual thoughts on the Danny versus Gary debate, picture up above. Please watch that video because I said everything I need to say right there. I was so passionate. I was stuttering a little bit in that video at the end. But yeah, um, also no disclaimer, Tyler, not sure what you're doing, but we here for the slice of life noir. Now, let's just get into the dinner immediately. So, she heard. And, you know, like you guys were saying, Andy should have told. Which is why she kept coming at Andy. Penelope was like, what? Tell me what's going on. What? And, you know, Danny had to reveal it. Here is the, here is the main reason I do not mind. Gary is not just a cheater. I feel like a lot of the people some women but men mostly who are upset with danny being the one to tell are forgetting some things or deciding that certain things do not matter number one characterization which is weak in this show but he tyler perry will stick to certain stereotypes number two gary is an abusive criminal okay okay number three he's a manipulator he's a manipulator so number one characterization andy would never have said anything to this woman unless she was forced it would have either been now or penelope would have asked her to brunch and then penelope would have had to force it out of her andy's not the type to do the right thing in that regard to just tell her what's going on if you watch the rest of the seasons andy has always had to be forced to reveal things that she should reveal whether it had something to do with her or not. But then I but then I remember seeing lots of comments throughout the years where y'all were okay and mad at Karen for the whole Andy best friend thing because you thought it was a good thing. 
for like Andy to like have secrets from Karen and for Andy to not tell Karen certain things. You guys always thought that was fine. So I'm I'm realizing now that y'all y'all know that Andy's a type to withhold things even if she should not. Number two, he is a abusive criminal. He's a criminal. He's a criminal, okay? He gave Andy the bear hug of death one time. You, you forget that? The bear hug of death? Okay. Uh, he also cheated on her while they were in a relationship and while, you know, all of that. And, you know, he also tried to take over her job. Seems kind of controlling and abusive to me. And you just think it's it's fine. Like, Penelope will find out when she finds out. Obviously, unless one of the girls said something, this girl was never going to find out. She's a little smarter than her brother, but she's still a little ditzy. Okay, guys? Common sense is a virtue. That's all I'll say. What's the third? Manipulation. Yeah, he's super manipulative. How, how? Why did I bring that up separately from the abuse? Because Andy really could sit there and be upset about everything that happened after the day, feeling bad about it. Because that's manipulation. She should have been let this nigga go. Let me give you guys a slightly personal story for five seconds. I was talking to somebody. I liked them to a certain degree, but they had a they had a bunch of red flags, right? But they were manipulative to the point that when they were calling me out of my name and saying all these horrendous things that weren't true because they never listened to me, so they never got to know me properly, right? So things they were saying about me were not true. When I would speak to my friends about it afterwards, I would cr- I cried once. Why would I cry if this guy ain't ish and if he's lying on me or if he's saying things that are hypocritical or don't match up with what he would say? Because the person manipulated me into still feeling something for them when I should have been cold and feel nothing. Andy is over here crying, thinking about all these things that we're going to discuss the marriage material thing, but thinking about all these things that don't really matter because Gary's a liar because he manipulated her. And you think that Penelope should stay with that? I know. I know a lot of you are like, we're not saying that she should stay, but Danny shouldn't have said nothing because of what's going on with her and Preston. Don't worry, I'm not a hypocrite. I saw the ending credits. I saw Preston ask Danny, did you sleep with him? And she looked at him like disgusted. That's one of the first time I've actually seen her look disgusted by Preston. Tyler, I, I, I hate you for this. I hate you for this, bro. But whatever. I also heard some spoilers about Tony, so you know what? Danny, get with him. Get with him, Danny. Because he is exactly what you deserve. He is exactly what you deserve. You see what I'm doing here? I'm being honest. Danny deserves nothing. She deserves to be in a relationship that doesn't serve her. She deserves that. But I'm not going to say that I'm upset with her for telling Penelope. That is a separate issue for me. Because two things can be true at the same time. You know, I think it's really weird that that guys are the ones who are mostly upset. I know there are some women, but it's mostly guys who are upset with Danny. As if guys aren't the kings of compartmentalization. Hypocrisy. Sabrina, you ooh, you, you are a follower. <laughs> My new favorite character rank is as follows. Even though I don't fully trust her yet. Penelope, Hayden, Fatima, Sabrina, Zach, uh, Karen, Danny, and Andy at the absolute bottom. Because Andy is a weirdo. I can't, the whole time. When she was saying, I wasn't going to tell you, I was going to tell you. I'm like, why were you not going to tell her anything? When Penelope revealed that she was seven months pregnant, I was, I was like shouting. I was like, yes, I knew it. I knew she wasn't like so, um, she wasn't so new to the pregnancy that like any little thing could cause a miscarriage. You guys were really going up on a Tuesday about this. Like guys, stop. Like I said before. Yes, the baby this, the baby that. He's an abuser. You want Penelope to end up like Zach? Over here fighting a crazy baby daddy? I'm asking you a real question. Right? Because let's say they didn't tell her anything and she has a smooth pregnancy living in Delulu land. 
But then she has to deal with Gary for the rest of her life, not knowing nothing. Ooh, let's get into Gary for a quick second. <laughs> so, the acting kind of got a little weird. I don't think any of the men reacted as quickly as I would have wanted them to, response-wise, but it's okay. Gary is a liar, bro. So, he was going on and on and on about how much he loved this girl. Andy is a side piece. <laughs> but then y'all wanted to get mad at Robin when he was like, Andy's a little bit loose in this office, but whatever. Andy's not wifey material. You know, he just slept with her because she was there. Like, Gary, stop lying. You would put yourself in front of Andy. Andy was never looking for you. You were always looking for her. Yo, Gary's a piece of work, but he was he was destroying Andy though mentally, destroying her mentally, like piece by piece by piece by piece. Crazy. Crazy, bro. <laughs> oh god, it was hilarious. The look on her face was hilarious. Tony. I guess he was trying to act like Danny. Um Oh, I, let me let me get the switchblade. Let me get the let me get the blicky. Let me get the nigga. Shut up, shut up. The acting was horrendous. At least with Danny, I've seen her for so many years that when she says stuff like that, I believe her. But Tony, it's almost like he studied Danny a little bit, and so he's like trying to act like her. It just seemed like way too much acting. The acting was terrible. Um, Danny, you ain't ish. You really sat there at the end of the night and said. Um, um, I'll talk to you at work. And he's like, I'll call you. He's like, sure. Like, ma'am, is this your man? You can't even end it with Preston first, you wicked smutty. See, guys, you see how I can say that she's wicked when it specifically comes to her and Tony and the cheating and Preston, but then still say that I don't mind that she's the one who led the charge of Penelope. Do, do, do you see the duality? Do you see how it, it, it works? Okay. Because I'm, I'm sick and tired of y'all on, on these comment sections and Twitter streets. Because y'all are crazy. Okay? Crazy. Pelpy was distressed, you know. But she was fine. She wasn't like fainting. Because she's seven months and she's strong. You know? She's just feeling some type of way because this man lied to her. And they didn't even tell her everything. Like I knew they wouldn't because for some reason Tyler likes to forget that he a boo booed. Andy. Abubu means A-B-U-S-E. Don't forget it. Tyler likes to forget that scene he put in. And to be honest, we didn't need that scene. That scene where he gave Andy the bear hug of death. If we're never going to talk about that again, and she's just going to get with him 15 different times after that, almost marry him, almost move in with him. Like, Tyler, if you're going to do all that, then why did you add to his level of degeneracy by making him an abubuer why because it, i was hoping they would have but i knew that they wouldn't tell the truth about that so you don't tell the truth that he is not just a cheater but an abuser you don't tell the truth about that then why'd you add that scene in that that scene is deletable like we didn't need that everything that could have happened could have happened without that but whatever and that's why y'all think like you can compare Danny to Gary because the show likes to forget all of the other crazy things that Gary has done. The corporate espionage, the physical abubu, the emotional abubu, the verbal abubu, right? They like, they like to dismiss all of that and just focus on the fact that he is a serial cheater. And so that's how you guys think that you can correlate Danny and Gary they're not even on the same tax bracket relax thanks so you know after the dust settles <laughs> i'm not gonna talk about jordan because him being like you wanna go you wanna go night night it's like two kevin hearts about to fight it's <laughs> so they leave uh after gary you know is told to leave everybody disperses the girls leave this is when Danny starts to do a little bit too much for me. Um, she starts recounting the evening with Andy there um, as if Andy wasn't there. Um, I'm just like, okay, Danny, we get it. And 
this is where I will give a little bit of credence to them not wanting Danny to do it. But not because Danny is a hypocrite, but because Danny does too much. Right? She'll, in my opinion, do the right thing by opening the lid on this, but then go back and then just be even more extra about it at the same time, right? Yeah, but I didn't appreciate that. And also, she's trying to like avoid going home, avoid going to see Preston. And I'm just like, why? Are you trying to have your cake and eat it too? Why? Or is are you afraid that Preston will clock you? Right? You won't be able to, to manipulate him. He'll just clock you. We'll talk more about them in the next episode because they will have a scene. Um, but yeah, they went over to Karen's. Told Karen what's going on. And you know, Karen had a lot of empathy. This is one of Karen's best scenes. She was so nice and you know calming and sensible let's talk about that scene for a second right so karen was listening to them andy broke down talked about everything that gary said um and you know how she's not marriage material and i before that episode i got spoiled because i saw a bunch of comments saying gary's right andy isn't marriage material I'm like, huh? What do you mean? Marriage does not look one way. There's many different types of marriage. And just like nobody is ready for a kid, right? Because there's always something else that you could be doing. Nobody's ready for marriage either. You know, it doesn't matter if you have all the money. Is your Are you fully mentally capable to be married? Are you telling me that Zach is marriage material? Stop. If any of you guys think Zach is husband material, then you can't say nothing about Andy being wifey material. Don't. Just don't say anything to me, please. Okay, let let let, let all that go. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, please. But yeah, they were talking about how, you know, don't don't believe him. Does Andy have her issues? Most definitely. Most definitely. But to say that she's not worthy of being married, that's a little weird. However, I did agree with Andy when she called up the parallels between her being with Gary, even though she knew he was married, versus her getting that get back with Penelope. However, I don't think it was get back because I have a feeling that he started with Penelope around the same time he started with you or a little bit after. So I don't really think it's karma. I just think you are dumb to be with him in the first place and you just get what you get. It's not karma. It's consequences. Something that this show doesn't do a lot of consequences for actions. You know, like when something illegal happens and people still have their jobs, there should be consequences for actions. And the show is starting to give that. This is a consequence for Andy's actions. You mess around with him. You stay messing around with him, even though you shouldn't. Right. They've been together for years, which means that in the sister's universe, it hasn't just been a year. Like we think it's just been a year and a half. Maybe it's been years. I haven't seen this man Gary on my screen for years. For what? I have no idea. But for years I've been seeing this man on my screen. I told y'all. Get this man off my screen. Get this criminal off my screen. Get him off. Anyways. And I didn't really put Gary in my rankings. Because I hate Gary. He's the worst character in the entire show. And I want him gone. Yay. Anyways. Oh, lighten the mood. <laughs> I should have put a clip in the beginning. Hopefully it doesn't get copywritten. If not, you saw it. If not, I'll just say it here. Um, the clip where Hayden and Gary are talking. Um, the part where he says, everything you do is stupid, Gary. <laughs> I love that. So I had to put it in the front. But if I didn't, whatever. Um, Gary, apparently like Hayden is his best friend, which makes sense. You know, Hayden is involved with all of his dirt. So he goes to tell him what happened. You know, and Hayden... Hayden is heartless. He wants all of this empathy for him, but he doesn't have any empathy for anybody else. But considering he's talking to Gary, I don't care. But I'm going to call it out because, you know, it's there. Um, He doesn't have any empathy towards him. Gary is just not peace. It's feeling like he regrets going to talk to Hayden. It's like, nigga, you're smart enough to know that Hayden be dumb sometimes. You know that. I don't know why you thought that, like, he would get it. You're over here tricking on two women 
And this conversation is where we get to see that Gary is a hypocrite and a liar, like we always knew he was, right? So he didn't really want to, to tell Andy all of that. Whether or not he really believes it is a moot point. He didn't want Andy to hear that because he still wants to be with her, which makes sense. You know, you're going to claim she's a side piece, but you wanted to marry her. But you bought her a penthouse and a car. And I know that rich men do do that. They, they buy their side pieces, penthouses and vehicles, but they don't marry them, though. They buy them a penthouse outside of the city with a little car and they go see them on the weekends. They don't spend all of their time trying to see about them, trying to take over their jobs just so that they can push out the head of the business because the head of the business has way too much suave for him. They don't do all the extra stuff that Gary was doing if they're just side pieces. They don't. But he said that to, you know, reassure Penelope and to break Andy down. But then he regretted it soon after. He was like, you know, I, I messed it up. But then he speaks about Penelope and you see that he likes Penelope. I don't want to set the precedent that Penelope is better. I don't. Because I personally think, I don't think that she's better. I don't. Tyler Perry rarely um, introduces a woman that will be con- that we will continue to see that is so much better than the other girls here. Like, rarely. Um, what I want is just to see a little bit more of what Gary was talking about. So he really does, let me not say that. He seems to have deluded himself into thinking that Penelope is wifey material. Is it because she's pregnant or because she is ditzy, you know? And unlike Andy, it's easier to get one over on her. Like, I'm just trying to figure out what about her is wifey material. It almost seems like he would have preferred to, like, let Andy go and be with Penelope. And if so, Gary, why were you still at Andy's office trying to see about her, stalking her? Why? If Penelope is all that and a bag of chips, why were you still focusing so heavily on Andy to the point where Penelope caught you talking to her one time? And you had to lie and say, oh, we're just going to my, my, my nigga associates. What are my nigga associates? Really? Okay. So he assures that, you know, he wishes that it never happened so that he could keep Andy and Penelope because he's an idiot. Um, Hayden doesn't have any advice for him but then to talk to one of them to see if he can manipulate the situation back in his favor and I think I saw a scene in the previous uh, next on sisters where um, Gary's given Hayden a, a document I think he felt upset that Hayden was not being empathetic with him so he decided to be petty because Gary's a very petty nigga and found some dirt on Tamara to like ruin Hayden's high which I'm not going to say I'm upset about that like Gary is being stereotypically Gary he's doing what Gary does you can't really be mad at him for it so he's going to let Hayden know this is just my hypothesis that those documents are you know to bring Hayden down to earth. He's like, oh, you think you all right, nigga? Well, let me show you that that that, that you not in a in La La Land either. She using you, blah blah blah. So Fatima's about to get in trouble. Because even though she tried to distance herself from Tamira, she was the one who got Tamira to be with him in the first place. And this is what I'm talking about her being reckless. Ah, we we'll, we will see what happens. However, I love seeing Hayden, though it was funny. His interactions were hilarious. And everything he said about Gary to Gary was 1,000% facts. All right. Um, Fatima and Zach. Zach, you know, he. I appreciate um, him being worried about his son and everything. Um, I get it. Um, they went into this weird conversation about how he even got uh, the girl pregnant at all. Yeah, so during the time when they were talking about the strip club and everything, um, 
you know, Fatima sounded a lot like Danny, which just compounds my thoughts that I feel like they would be a very interesting friend dynamic. And I want them to be friends so bad. Also, where did Danny and Zach's friendship go? I remember while watching the episode, this is just to bring up Danny for five seconds. I was thinking about everything that she had with Preston. Preston was protecting her, financially supporting her, giving her that go, go in bed. The only thing that they didn't have in common was, I, I, I guess, the depth of conversation which she could get from her friends and Zach. All you had to do was reignite your friendship with Zach and Zach can, can talk to you about the latest hip-hop tunes and maybe smoke with you here and there. But for some reason, Tyler Perry has abandoned their entire friendship. I remember telling you guys a long time ago, I thought that Zach and Danny would have ended up being together. It would have been very, very messy because of Karen, but I thought they were pretty good together before the Fatima thing came along. Let me know what, what you would have thought about Danny and Zach being together. If we're talking about perfect, and it's not and it's not Preston. I thought her and Zach would have been pretty cute together. But of course they 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 made it strictly platonic. It is what it is. But yeah, they were talking about the baby and Fatima, you know, was acting a lot like Danny, which he's very used to. And apparently I told you guys this before. Zach likes Danny, bro. Which is why I that's I think that's why he relates to Fatima. Because Fatima is like a less annoying version of Danny. It's like Danny in doses that Zach prefers. Same body type and everything. I'm just saying there's something there. So I really want Fatima to be friends with Danny. And I want Zach to rekindle his friendship with Danny. It's not completely gone because, you know, when she's having issues with Preston, she did call Zach. But I'm just saying. So not much to say there. They're, they're doing their stupid hellos and goodbyes. Um, I love you so much. I'm here with you. We, we ride together. We die together. Bad relationships for life. Um, but then you know something happens so they're going to go see about this baby but guys moral of the story the writing is changing the episodes are becoming a little bit more likable in my personal opinion I know some people are going to be mad at this episode because they can't stand Danny and I understand that to a certain degree but Penelope had to find out I will go right back to the, the, the Danny dislike bandwagon now that Penelope is not involved because now it just goes back to Danny and her own personal issues, which you guys know I've always had an issue with anyways. Um, please let me know what you thought of this slice of life noir episode down below. Your thoughts and opinions. Um, next week will be the Karen episode. I don't know if I'm going to be able to say anything because I've complained about Karen for a long time. <laughs> but it's going to be a Karen episode and maybe one extra episode about whatever thoughts I did not get to a shoe here. Oh, also, I feel so sorry that for some reason Sabrina and rich are still being sidetracked oh maurice um maurice got got his version of calvin um at that little party he was at um and he didn't just go and sleep with him he really i cannot believe that maurice is learning and danny and andy have not i think that's just very interesting and i don't even like maurice you guys know i don't like maurice like that but he learns lesson and he's slowing down a little bit. That's crazy, Tyler. That is crazy. So we'll see what's going on with Maurice and Patrick. Okay, I think that's literally everything. That's literally everything. Um, like I have to say in almost every episode, bring Robin back. <laughs> I know they're really trying to push her and Jordan. I don't care. Bring Robin back. Bring Robin back. I know that Jordan is mad at Gary right now, but you can't handle that nigga. You can't. I know some people would be like, well, Robin couldn't handle him either. Yes, he could have. He just he just wasn't aware that like Gary was this crazy. I feel like he's disappeared to collect money to come back and bury Gary. That's what that's my personal cute head cannon. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. It's Sister Saturday. Give me your thoughts and opinions down below. And goodbye, my size. Susu.